There's something human about going, please give me a plan. Uh, tell me my place in that plan and then watching it all unfold. It's like plans are beautiful. And we think to ourselves when we watch them unfold, what beauty it all coheres, this plan. And that's true in the business world too, isn't it? You look around in the business world and all you see is a plethora of plans. We're always planning. Normally it starts in September where the board goes off and does their senior leadership retreat. In September or October, they put together their plan, their, their strategic plan. And then they present, at the moment it seems to involve the words 2020 in it. So everyone's got a something plan 2020. And then they present that to the board. And then the board approves the plan, the strategic plan. They'll announce the strategic plan to the, if they're a publicly traded company, uh, to the investment community who kind of blesses the plan, weighs in on the plan. When we criticize people that are CEOs is because they don't have a good enough plan, like uh, Elon Musk at Tesla didn't have an, enough of a production plan. Um, and then once you get the board approving the plan, then the plan gets broken down into an operations plan, a human resources plan, a talent plan, a marketing plan. Everyone ends up with their plans. And then, and then each department goes off on their offsite to explain the plan. Then, then it goes down further and then, then there's a sub plan and a sub plan. Sooner or later, you as a team leader, you get your plan, which is supposed to fit into everyone else's plan. So you look around and you can clearly see that the deep belief of companies and organizations is that the best plan wins. That if we can just think of all the variables at play and put together a plan in place with each person's role, each function's role, each department's role, perfectly circumscribed and organized and filigreed, it calms us down because the world's so crazy out there and this plan puts kind of a scaffolding together on which we can build our futures. But is it true? Is it true that the best plan wins? The problem, of course, with so many plans in a very complex, multifaceted world is it takes a lot of time to really think through all the different variables that are at play within a plan. You have to retreat from the real world to sit there, to clear your head enough to put your plan together. And as you do that, if you're too simplistic in your planning, it's just a bunch of generality. And so you get detailed and you get more detailed. You double, triple, quadruple, click in to the variables in your plan because you've got to get into the nitty gritty. Unfortunately, the more detailed and full of nitty gritty your plan is, the longer it takes for you to put it together, the more irrelevant the plan is. Because if there's one feature, and you know where I'm going with this, but if there's one feature about the world of work that we can all agree on, it's that things move really, really, really fast. Really fast. And therefore the plan that you took so long to put together in September and October is rendered irrelevant by the events that transpired the real world's moved on by November, and unfortunately your plan was put together when faced with a different real world. Plans, no question, they're not useless. Plans are useful in that they help us scope the world that we see. They help us scope the problem, but they don't actually help us with the solution at all, do they? They enable us not to create a better future. What do plans do? They help us to engage with a recent past. If we are going to build organizations, companies, teams that can build a better future, we can't rely on plans to provide our solutions. Plans scope problems. And so they help organize your thinking. But if you want to know what action to take, if you want to know how to engage in the real world, you have to realize that your plans are a rear view mirror. If we're going to get all of us to create a better future, we've got to help our people on the front lines engage with the world as it really is, regardless of what plan we put together five miles behind the front line. We've got to help people engage with the world as it really is in a way that allows us not to have static, brittle strength, but to have tensile, adaptive strength that fits with the dynamic, constantly changing nature of the world at large.